No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey, I can write and solve, uh, I can write the solution to inequalities in interval notation. So now we're going to learn a different way. Um, we were actually just talking about as math teachers. Interval notation, we kind of think of it as like math slang. It's what mathematicians use because it's easier. It's going to start off feeling harder because you're going to say, oh, that's different. I've never seen it before. But as soon as you get through it, you're going to go, oh, this is way easier. You just learned set builder. Now we're doing interval, and hopefully this will make your life easier. So it's saying, by the end of this lesson, if you cannot write your, your inequality in interval notation, then you need to either rewatch the video or contact us. All right, so what is interval notation? Interval notation is a way to write solutions to inequalities. In fact, it's kind of what mathematicians do to make things easier for themselves. So you need to have this all in your notes, so please make sure you write this down. Pause the video and write it down. So, Use parentheses for open circles on your graph, or if you have an inequality, greater than or less than sign, right? Um, use brackets for a closed circle, that's a filled in circle in an inequality, I mean in a graph, or it's a less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. So, let me give you an example. We have x is greater than 4. This is the graph of x is greater than 4, right? It's greater than sign, not equal to, and it's, great, it's going in that direction. If I was to write that in set builder, you'd have to go, oh my gosh, x is greater than 4. Oh, not even that. I'd have to do what first? I'd say, x is an element of the reals such that x is greater than 4. And this is, while this is nice academic speech, it's not really good. You know, break it down simple. So this is how we came up with interval notation. So what mathematicians did is they go, you know what? I'm starting at four, right? And it goes to the right forever. Well, when something goes to the right forever, what do we call that? What happens if something goes forever and never ends? We call it infinity. Infinity. Infinity is the concept of the idea that something goes on forever and never ends. It's the reason why we don't have the world's biggest number. Because no matter what number you can think of, I can think of one bigger. Mr. Nelson, give me a big number. 2,690 million. Whoa. And all I have to do is say plus one. And it's bigger. What about you, Ms. Garcia? Give me the biggest number. 99 billion, jillion, per trillion, gillion, billion, zillion. Googleplex, 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 zillion. I don't even know if that's a number. Anyway, all I have to do is say plus one, and guess what happens? I've got the bigger number. So there's no such thing as the biggest number because numbers go on forever. So what we do instead is we say it goes on, when we see those arrows filled in, we say it goes on to infinity. Here's the thing though, infinity is not a number. It's a concept, meaning it's not something that I can hold in my hand. A number, four, I give me four of those, put it in my hand. Four billion, that'd be a big giant. Stack. But guess what? I could still get that. Infinity, I cannot put it in my hand. So all I got to do is put a parenthesis between them. I look here and remember our rules. If I use a parenthesis when it's an open circle, is this an open circle? So I use a parenthesis. Over here, we say, well, that's filled in. So shouldn't I use a bracket? We don't use a bracket because infinity is a concept. So infinity can never be included in your answer. So it gets a parenthesis. And so this. Instead of writing all that x as an element, this is interval notation. Remember that note, when we have an arrow going off the number line, it is considered to go on forever. This is represented by the symbol positive infinity. Now, notice I didn't put a positive sign here, just like, what, like if you tell somebody you're 15, you don't have to tell them that you're positive or negative. It's assumed if I write infinity that I'm talking about positive infinity. So let's flip that over to the next side. All right. Uh, we're just, these are the parentheses and the brackets again. We're just going to look at another problem. Here is another equation, and on this equation I have x is less than or equal to 4. Here's the graph of that, so we started with 4. Less than means going to the left, and equal to means I fill in the circle here. I have the equation. Now if I had to do this in set builder, that would be x is an element of the real such that uh, x is less than or equal to 4. And that's a pain in the butt. It's a lot to write, right? So again, this is kind of like math slang. We want to make it easier to itself. It does make an assumption. It makes an assumption that we're always talking about real numbers. But I can go, OK, I look at the stuff, and I read from left to right. I read from left first. What do I see first? I see an arrow going off to the left. So people say, OK, that's infinity. But it isn't. Because infinity, we said, assumed is positive, right? If it's going to the left, 
What do we have to assume in that case? It still goes on forever, but what direction is it going in? Negative. The negative direction. So we do something called negative infinity. We didn't have to put positive infinity because we assume positive. But if it's going in the negative direction, we say negative infinity. It's going on forever and ever and ever in the negative, di negative direction, and it will never get there. And then the number we're talking about is 4. And now we go and look at it. Is 4 included? Yeah, it's filled in. So when stuff is filled in, that means it's included. That means it gets a bracket. What about the negative infinity? Do we put a bracket on that too? No. no. Because infinity is a concept. I cannot put it in my hand. It's an idea. So I just give it a parenthesis. So guess what? That is how we write it. It's way easier than writing this. And remember, once again, no, when you have an arrow going off the number line, it is considered to go on forever. It is represented by the symbol negative infinity. So if it's going to the left, it's negative infinity. If it's going to the right, it's positive. Ms. Garcia is going to take you through a couple just to show you, and then Mr. Nelson is going to finish it up. All right, so now let's go back and forth between the two different things. First of all, we need some set builder notation. We need an actual written way to do this other than just the graph. So let's go ahead and build x. And we know this is going to focus on the 2, so I've got a 2. And I know since it's filled into the right, it's greater, so it gets a gator looking at the x. And then I have to ask myself, is this filled in? Well, no. So the 2 is not included. I have x is greater than 2, and that's super easy to just put into set builder notation. We've got x is the element, and that's a solid line, so that's going to be the reals. Oh, reals, such that x is greater than 2. And we got some funky chickens. All right, so then for interval notation, well, this is a lot to write, so let's find the slang version of this. We are assuming that this is in the real numbers, and if it's a solid line, you're good. Don't worry about that. So we're going to focus on the 2. And now this one is going to the right, which means it's going to go greater and greater and greater all the way just for infinity. Now, do we need brackets or parentheses? Well, that is an open circle. So just like I didn't need a line under this, I don't need a bracket. I just need a parenthesis. And infinity is a concept, not a number. So we never put a bracket on an infinity symbol. All right, let's try one more example like this. All right. Now we've got, again, set builder notation. So let's write x. And we've got a 0 as our focus one here. It looks like this arrow is going forever in the left direction. So we've got left is less. So we've got a little mouse looking at the x. And is this circle filled in? Well, this time it is, which means we have to include it. x is less than or equal to 0. And that's super easy to throw into set builder notation. x is an element of the reals such that x is less than or equal to zero funky chicken. I feel like you use that with a, with a uppercase. X is an element. You're right, this is academic speak. So let me re-say that. X is an element of the reals such that x is less than or equal to zero. Indubitably. Indubitably. That is very academic. Now let's just do the slang version. So we got zero. And we're going forever in the left direction, which means, yeah, that's going to be an infinity, but that's a negative infinity because it's going forever and ever in the uh, negative numbers. So we got our negative infinity, comma in between them. We never include infinity, so infinity is always a parenthesis. Zero, on the other hand, well, that's going to have a bracket this time because that is a filled in circle. And that is a much shorter version of saying this. That is our slang version. Mr. Nelson, help us out here. Break it down. <laughs> All right, so then this one, uh, we're not going to have the graph. We're given an inequality instead. I would just always say make sure that you graph the inequality. Uh, set builder notation is going to be really easy on this one because I'm already given the inequality. So let's go to there, and then we'll do our graph. Let's we'll start with our funky chicken brackets. We got b is our variable. Uh, so we're going to say b is an element in the real numbers such that b well, if I'm putting the variable first, let's see here. Is B have, does it have the mouse or does it have a gator? Well, it has the mouse. So we are going to be giving it a mouse. And that is going to be less than or equal to 5. All right, there's your set notation, set builder like notation. Mean like I'm reading it. There you go, Mr. Craig. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to interval notation. For interval notation, it's always going to be easier for us to graph it first and then read the graph from left to right. So let's do that really quick. The number that is important to me is 5, 
I'm going to throw that right here and then round it our four and our six. Uh, well, what way is this graph going to go? Well, we're going to start at five. I'm going to put a circle there. It is a solution, so I'm going to fill in this circle. But does it go to the left or does it go to the right? Well, because the B has the mouse, it's going to be less than. It's going to be smaller. So that ain't no gator. We are going to go to the left because B is less than or equal to. So now for interval notation, we are just going to simply read our graph from left to right. And I can see that the arrow is going to the left. To the left means it's going toward negative infinity. So that's where we are going to start our interval notation. As we're coming across this interval, uh, this graph, our interval notation starts at negative infinity and it goes up till 5. So that's where our interval notation ends. And now we have to do our parentheses and brackets. Is negative infinity included? Never. No. And so we use parentheses to show that infinity cannot be included and that it's not included. Is 5 included in our solutions? Oh, yeah. yes. yes. So we use a bracket to show that 5 is included with interval notation. And there's our interval notation. So how would I read that? It just reads as? From negative infinity to 5. So every number between negative infinity all the way up to 5 is a solution, and that includes 5. Oh, that's much easier. That's a lot easier than writing all this It's out. like you're talking in slang. Almost. Well, here's another one. We need to do interval notation and set builder notation. See if you can do this one by yourself. And let's give it a shot. Well, it's already got the interval notation. That makes set builder notation really easy. We're using the variable m. So m is an element in the real numbers such that m is greater than greater than or equal to negative 2. is an element in the real such that m is greater than or equal to negative 2. There's your set builder notation. Very, very simple. Well, for interval notation, let's graph this really quick. Let's graph this really quick. What's the number I'm concerned about? Negative 2. Negative 2. And if I go up one from there? Negative 1. And if I go down one from there? Negative 3. All right. And is negative 2 included? Uh-huh. Yes. It sure is because it is equal to. So we are going to do a filled in circle on negative 2. And is it going to go to the left or to the right? Well, let's take a look. M has a gator or a mouse. Gator's greater. It has a gator, so it's greater. So it's going to go to the right toward the greater <laughs> numbers. And let's remember, we always read a graph from left to right, and this graph starts at negative 2, includes it, and it keeps on going to the right. And what does this arrow mean? It goes infinity. on forever. That means it's going on toward infinity forever and ever. So let's read the graph from left to right. We start at negative 2, it goes off to positive infinity, and now we have to do brackets and parentheses. Okay. Is negative 2 included? Uh -huh. yeah. It is included, so we give it a yep. bracket. Is can't infinity included? Can't catch that gator. You <laughs> can't catch that gator. So it's not included. We're going to show that by doing parentheses. Infinities always get parentheses because you can never, ever, ever include it. That was so helpful. And that's interval notation. Now do the work. Now do all the work below this video. Get it done. Submit it. Let us know how you did. Aha! Uh -huh.